Who of us can resist free stuff from Facebook Marketplace? When I saw this MacBook Pro amongst various household items left on someone's nature strip for free, I had to jump in my car and be the first one to get there. The pickup location was some time away from my house, so I wasn't certain the trip would pay off. But as I turned the corner, it was still sitting there, waiting for someone to come along and save it. What's even better is this is the less common 43cm or 17 inch screen size. It's in pretty good condition overall, however there's a few scratches. The case is warped near the Ethernet port, which is common on these unibody MacBooks. But something I haven't seen before is a damaged battery indicator. We'll have to see what can be done about that. It's missing two screws on the base, and something is rattling around inside. Before we see if it powers on, I want to open it to find out what's loose, as if it's a screw we run the risk of shorting something out. I can get what screws are left in the base removed before we lift off the back cover. Immediately we can see the source of the rattle. The hard drive's retention bracket is broken. It's also missing three tri-wing screws that typically hold the battery in place. That being said, there really isn't a speck of dust inside this laptop. However, the foam piece covered in some kind of conductive material has corroded, likely meaning moisture or even liquid has come into contact with it at some point. As for the battery level indicator, it appears to all be intact. The adhesive has either just let go, or this is a replacement part that was never glued in. With that, I think this laptop is ready for a test. To power it up, we'll need the highest wattage MagSafe One charger, the 85 watt. If the battery doesn't work, this will still allow the laptop to boot. Plugging the laptop in, the charger turns orange, indicating the battery is detected and attempting to charge. So let's power it up. I don't know why, but I didn't think it was going to work. Of course, the hard drive has been removed, which is commendable for the previous owner, as many people leave their data on old laptops they give away. Of course, that meant it wasn't going to boot into an OS. So, I'll open the laptop again and temporarily install a test drive which has macOS 10 Snow Leopard. This version of macOS is the same age as the laptop. Snow Leopard really is the iOS 6 of macOS versions. But now that we're booted, we can see some additional hardware info. This is a 2009 model MacBook Pro with a 2.8GHz Core 2 Duo and 4GB of RAM. But the true score with this laptop is its Apple branded battery, which only has 195 charge cycles, so it's practically new. Snow Leopard was the first version of macOS I used back in 2011 when my father got his iMac. So seeing it after all these years is so nostalgic. And being from the 2000s, it will of course turn into a media center PC, even having its own remote. But no matter how much you want to run its original OS, the web browser is so outdated, it cannot even load Google on Safari version 4. So let's see if we can make this 16 year old laptop usable again in 2025, but not only upgrade it with an SSD and max out its RAM, but actually get it running the newest version of Mac OS, even when Apple dropped update support for this laptop a decade ago. The previous owner didn't leave us with any hard drive screws, so I had to source some myself. On closer inspection of this hard drive bracket, it's clearly for a different Mac model. Someone has even forced a few Torx screws in place of the Philips ones. I just hope the threads haven't been damaged. Would you believe I have a box of old Mac parts I bought off a repair business years ago that just happens to have a heap of these hard drive retention brackets? The trick is finding the correct one. It seems Apple made quite a few variations to this bracket over the years, but I happen to have one that fits correctly. But before the SSD can be installed, I need to repair the battery indicator. I believe this to be a replacement as it has a sticker with a smiley face on it. It'll need to be adhered to the frame with some liquid adhesive. I wasn't able to remove the old adhesive as it was as strong as cement. Once it's positioned into place, I'll use a clamp to hold it tight till the glue is cured. 
Now the SSD can be installed along with its new retention bracket. I didn't have enough screws for the SSD, however it will do for now. Installing an 8GB RAM kit will max out this MacBook's memory. Next, I can secure the battery with some original Apple security screws. Batteries on MacBooks a year prior were user removable, but starting with this model, it was screwed in with tri-wing screws to prevent user removal. Installing these pesky little screws, the battery can be plugged back into the logic board and the bottom case reattached. Sourcing yet again more screws to replace the two missing. Now it's time for an operating system. Officially, the last supported version is El Capitan, version 10.11, released in 2015. This decade-old Apple operating system runs well on this laptop, but it lacks a modern web browser, so almost every website won't load correctly or at all. YouTube won't even load the homepage. Apple's website is broken, along with eBay. The only site that appeared to work, at a glance, was Amazon. This is what anyone with an old computer will face once it's lost software support. It's why older machines like this one end up thrown out. There may be nothing wrong with them, but without web browser support, they become unusable. Or so you're led to believe. But thanks to OpenCore, we can force this MacBook to upgrade to the latest version of macOS, macOS 15 Sequoia. Although we'll still need another computer to complete the process, as the web browser on El Capitan cannot load the download links. With the files downloaded and copied to this laptop, I can run the installer. Once we have the OpenCore utility, we can run the first option to build and install OpenCore. This will patch the EFI petition to allow the laptop to boot and add support required to run newer versions of macOS. From here, we can pick a version of macOS to install. While the team behind the tool managed to get the latest version of macOS running on Macs as old as 2008, you cannot create the installation drive on anything older than High Sierra due to incompatibilities to the create install media command. So it's out with my other MacBook Pro, this one a 2011 model with High Sierra. But with our copy of Sequoia, we can now reboot the laptop into OpenCore's EFI boot option, then selecting install macOS Sequoia. One glaring issue is that the installer cannot see the inbuilt keyboard and trackpad. The keyboard and trackpad in this particular model connect via USB 1.1. This is because Apple has removed capability of a once universal standard. OpenCore will automatically patch this laptop after macOS is installed, but for now we have to use an external keyboard and mouse. Other than that, it should install as if this was a new MacBook. It took about two hours from downloading and creating the install media to actually installing the OS, but we've made it. The keyboard and trackpad are working, so OpenCore has done its miracle work. The setup process wasn't without a further hiccup. The screen went blank midway with only the cursor showing, but pressing a few keys, it came back. Honestly, it was probably just a macOS bug. But with the setup done, we now have a complete and up-to-date MacBook Pro. And we're done. So this is it. A disregarded, outdated 2009 MacBook Pro has been given a new lease on life, with some hardware upgrades and a software patch to get it running the latest macOS version. But how does it run? I don't believe there is a single officially supported Mac with NVIDIA graphics. So for OpenCore to have established some kind of graphics acceleration so the laptop doesn't run like a slideshow is amazing. Although there is still plenty of weird graphical glitches. But considering the graphics in this laptop have 256 megabytes and 512 megabytes of video memory respectively, it's amazing such a modern operating system can run at all. 
Now that we finally have a modern version of Safari, we can browse the web as any modern computer can, bearing in mind the dated hardware can only achieve so much. YouTube video playback drops frames and stutters at 1080p 50 frames a second, but runs okay at 720p, or even low frame rate 1080p, such as 25 frames a second. The Wi-Fi chip is also showing its age, as web pages take significantly longer to load than other devices. However, considering the hardware and the fact that this computer was deemed obsolete 10 years ago, it is usable, granted only for minimal low-powered tasks, but I think we've still managed to save it. One thing to keep in mind if you do this with your own computer is that open core patches need to be applied after every software upgrade. And while it runs, it isn't perfect. You should definitely back up your data before attempting this. I did also experiment with getting Windows 11 onto this MacBook. However, the latest release will not boot at all. Older versions can be installed with a few workarounds. However, these older versions of Windows 11 will lose security updates at the same time as Windows 10. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the computer playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.